Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Ghost Thief Deadly Shadows. Today, we are going to tackle Of Brethren and Betrayers, the Keeper Compound. Let's get started. Last time, after a long slog through the city, we finally arrived in Keeper Orland's office, where there's a secret passage to the Keeper Compound. I will let Garrett brief you, and we'll go from there. Orland's tunnel was right where I was told it would be. I haven't been in the Keeper compound since my trial. It's a sprawling complex right in the heart of the city, hidden by glyphs. Orland has the compound on alert, so they'll be armed and ready for intruders. Me, that is. So much for working together. I know I didn't kill Katika, but someone did and my money's on Orland. He fixed the trial and sent the assassins after me and the fallen clock tower points right to his office. Brethren and betrayer suddenly makes sense. But suspicions aren't enough, so tonight I'll do some snooping. And if a little keeper wealth ends up in my pockets, all the better. Orland's place is on the top floor. No surprise, he's always liked looking down on people. Artemis has a room near the dormitories. I should search there, too. And I'd better check the scene of Katika's murder. One last thing. The Keeper Council meets tonight. If I can stay awake, I might learn something. So we'll put it on expert like we always do. Here are our objectives. Search Orland's quarters on the top floor for information that might implicate him. Search Artemis's quarters in the dormitory for a clue to his whereabouts. Lastly, visit Katika's murder site in the lower libraries to investigate the cause of her death. When all your objectives are complete, leave the Keeper compound through the old quarter passage in the lower libraries. Note. Katika was murdered in her chambers in the lower libraries. Until Orland's binding seal is destroyed, the lower libraries will not be accessible. So I actually had to use a little bit of my gear in day six, which is unusual. So I'm entering this mission with blackjack dagger, 25 water arrows, 30 broadhead arrows, 5 noisemaker arrows, 4 gas arrows, 15 fire arrows, 20 moss arrows, 27,225 gold. Upgrades, you see I've lost the door glyph for now, so I have my mechanical eye, my lock picks, my climbing gloves, and my broadhead and moss arrow upgrades. I have five holy waters, five oil flasks, ten health potions, five explosive mines, twenty flash bombs, five gas bombs. I'm carrying 2800 in loot. Quest items, I've got my velvet bag, my climbing gloves, the compendium of approach, the glyph key, and a bunch of keys. And I do have a map of the Keeper compound. The entrance from the Keeper library will put us in the North Tower. If we head south from there, we reach the Council Room. Above the Council Room on the top floor, as you can see, are Orland's Quarters. There are two different passages to Orland's Quarters, one out of the Dining Hall, one out of the Dormitory. Moving south from the council room, we arrive in the Elder's Library, and in the southern end of that library is a load zone, which takes us to the lower libraries. Once we're in the lower libraries, to the west are Catechist Chambers, to the south is something called the Hall of Statues, and off to the east is the Old Quarter Passage. Nothing too terrible, so let's get started. Now here at the very beginning, there are three water arrows in a grate underneath the tunnel from Orland's office. Near the very beginning, there will be a Keeper Council meeting. We can affect the outcome of the vote if we use our blackjack, but obviously if we're ghosting, we can't do that, so we have to take the default results of the council meeting, which aren't as bad for us as they sound, don't worry. Bringing someone back who left. Certainly an un Bloodshed in the compound. It has been centuries, has it not? 278 years, Keeper Vorig. I read my histories. Though, of course, there have been the unexplained disappearances. The Council must respond to this. Quickly. And decisively. Come, let us take our places, and when the vote comes, 
I trust you will step forward with me to be counted. We will need every vote in favor we can muster. Attendance in the council is lacking. Wonder what they have left to decide. <laughs> Maybe I can persuade a few keepers to vote my way. So they vote by stepping forward with their candles to be counted. So if we knock them out, they won't step forward to be counted. So I'll shut the grate behind me and read this book. The coming of the third dawn shall be seen upon the land as the beginning of the end is the opening of the unwritten times. The order of the glyphs shall be touched by the ancient and the wretched, and the words of the glyphs shall unwind. And we're in the North Tower. Xavier would never have allowed it, but times are different. Over here, we have the blue flame, requires no fuel, yet burns without ceasing. And inside it are two fire arrows. Over here, these doors lead to the council room, so we'll open them in a minute. Here's a note. Until further notice, all glyph doors shall be sealed. Until the brethren and betrayer has been dealt with, we cannot allow unfettered travel through our compound. Acolytes should take care to travel in pairs and remain vigilant. I think the one over here says the same thing. Until further notice, all glyph doors shall be sealed. Until the brethren and betrayer has been dealt with, we cannot allow unfettered travel through our compound. Acolytes should take care to travel in pairs and remain vigilant. Before we head to the council room and to the rest of the compound, we should clear the north tower. So head up the stairs. There's only one patroller up here. The two keepers who were talking have taken spots in their council room alcoves, and they'll never be a problem again unless we make noise right behind them. The interpreter. You see her standing I there. I barely recognize her now. How old she has grown, and so quickly. It is not right that she continues her work with the glyphs. The process is aging her too rapidly. It's odd to me that he's still talking about Katika, considering that she has been murdered, but... Whatever. Now when you can see that barrel and that stack of crates, you're looking at the end of his patrol point, so... Wait till you hear him go away. First thing to do is bounce up to the top of these stairs and get the moss arrow next to these crates. That will cause them to shift, so I find it advisable to do it when he's at the other end of his patrol. Then retreat down the stairs. He never pauses anywhere except here. He walks a loop over to where all the loot is and then comes back here for his pause so if this is going to work we have to use this alcove against him fellow keepers many of us are called elsewhere this night but for those that remain I now bring this council to order the question we consider first is whether access to Catalyst <coughs> chambers shall be prescribed Shall we remove a guard from the Grand Hall and set him to guard the scene of Interpreter Katika's murder? Garrett will no doubt seek to return to the scene of his crime. Let us place a guard, ensuring an end to his malice for once and all. A guard will hardly stop Garrett, and will only cause trouble for our own work. The violence in the city is growing. We need not add to it by arming our own against each other. Let Katika's memory retain some privacy. There is nothing to be gained by picking over her rooms. Place a guard that they might warn away those whose curiosity outweighs their respect. Well spoken, all. Weigh all that you have heard, and all that you know in consideration. Remember, a majority vote is needed to take action. If your vote is to be yes, you must step forward and be counted. If your vote is to be no, remain unseen in your alcove. The question before us is, do you wish to have Katika's chambers guarded? Keepers, make your decisions known now. The decision of the council is yes. None shall be permitted entry to Katika's chambers, and a guard shall be directed to ensure that this is so. 
The second issue at hand concerns some books in the Elder Libraries which may shed light on the unwritten times. A proposal has been made to bring these precious volumes upstairs to the Hall of Scribes for further study, and where, under many watchful eyes, we might ensure the safety of these valuable chronicles. It is no secret that there have been disappearances. So, shall these books be moved to the Hall of Scribes? The only reasonable vote is for the safety of these precious books. They must be moved. If the unwritten times are truly upon us, then we must learn as much as we can, as quickly as we can. That is best done in the Hall of Scribes, so that more than one can study a volume. The books are fragile, and will not stand the move or harsh treatment. They've been safe up until now. They should remain where they are. If there is value, it is in the words, not the paper. And we keepers are not seduced by gold covers. Let them be moved and scribed. Thank you for all your words. Weigh all that you have heard and all that you know in consideration. And the question before us is, should the books in the Elder's Library be brought to the more populated scribe group for study? The decision of the Council is yes. The books shall be taken from the libraries of the Elders and brought upstairs to the scribes. If there is no further business, we shall adjourn. Whoa. Hmm? Blast. It's gone. I was gonna say. Mm. Back to my meditations. I didn't think anyone left their alcove. I'll take the green alert just because I don't feel like listening to that whole conversation again. <clears throat> and a few green alerts are inevitable anyway. This mission can't be supremed. So, the two things they voted on... Even though they voted to put a guard outside Catechus Chambers, I don't know if it's a glitch or what, but I've never seen a guard show up there, regardless of how the council votes. And as for the second one, they try to make it sound scary with words like more populated and many watchful eyes, but in fact, there are only two dudes in the scribe room and stealing the book from there is pretty easy. Some of the glyphs are changing. It may why? even be easier than stealing it from the Elder Library, given the position of the various guards. So, get the fine portrait off the wall that's worth 150 brings me to 3%, and let's read this book. The blue flame blazes, the deadly shadows amass, the pendulum swings in wider and wider arcs. Our efforts have garnered not balance, but chaos, and the unwritten times will be upon us. The first sign was mapped out in darkness in the return of the trickster. The eye was opened, and the city seemed sure to fall into madness. The balance tipped from civilization towards savagery. While the darkness was defeated by the true keeper, trickery thrown back onto the trickster himself, the balance shifted and the second sign was graven in steel. Iron triumphed over flesh and leaf and the Hammer Faction stood in full force behind a mad prophet. The machine fell to its own power, and the prophet's tongue was stilled, but the pendulum swings yet. Both factions, Greenwood and Machine, will again strive against each other, and the world will turn between them. All will be darkness and shadow, and the future shall be unwritten forever. I think I'm safe from being spotted with a wall flattened here, so I'm going to wait until he gets back to his end point again. Very good. On the other side of this table, there's a golden bell on the wall worth another 150, brings my total to 6%, and then my preferred way down is over the railing and down the wall with my climbing gloves. Makes getting past the patroller rather easy, if you ask me.
Yeah, that's good. All the counselors are still in their alcoves. I shall move on into the council room. That's a right, left, up, down. No, the good news is that none of the counselors in their alcoves can see you. So the only guy you have to worry about here on the ground level is the patroller. I want to pickpocket his wand as I have a good opportunity to do so and get the health potion that we can see in the chair from my trial. <laughs> what? I don't know why he just decided to turn a 180 on his heel. He usually has two patrol or two troll points. Normally, I see him walk clockwise around the room. He stops and looks at the wall at two different places. So maybe I need to study him a little more. Let's see, there's one of his spots. The other is here in front of that torch and plaque. Although he's going counterclockwise this time. Well, let's stay in the shadows for now, just in case. There we go. The keeper is seldom the victim of a pickpocket. I'm always a big fan of using the glitch to drop their wands. Of course, it doesn't matter for a ghoster, but if you're not a ghoster, pickpocketing their wands has the effect of turning them into harmless, unarmed AIs. With that accomplished, wait until he's paused somewhere and nab the health potion out of the chair. We aren't done in the council room by any means. There's a lot of loot in various alcoves, but there are far better ways to get it than trying to climb up from the ground floor. So when he gets over to that end of his patrol, I should be able to get through this door. And with that accomplished, I'll do my first real save. So here we have arrived in the Elder Library, or Elder's Library, whatever you want to call it. There's one guy who stands there. Oh, that's different. <laughs> in my practice run, he was facing straight out from the wall. That angle is going to make things a lot easier on me, I think. If May you have balance, whatever. If you manage to knock out both of the counselors at the beginning, the vote to move the books will fail. If that's the case, then one of your pieces of special loot, the Imbris Analects, will be sitting on this table. Now, above the door glyph, and you actually have to get it before you open the door, you run into trouble. You see some gleaming golden scales. They're one of our pieces of special loot, and they are pretty tough to get, but I think that with him turned, 
Indeed. instead of facing straight, I may be able to get in there and get them without any supreme busts. Let's find out. Heard something, but see, I should be. I thought I could mantle around the gargoyle, but I think that if I mantle up onto the bookshelf, I should be able to jump to the wall behind him and climb up and get the scales. So let's give that a whirl. <laughs> hmm. Look there. Do you see anything? He's yellow alerted, but that will work just fine, I know. Well, I wonder which way he's supposed to be. <laughs> there. Who Damn. is... I think the problem is the noise I'm making. I think I'll be better off if I try to slide down to his right and then attach to the wall from the ground rather than jumping off the bookshelf. There. I know you were there. This may not end up being as easy as I thought. It rarely is. I will say this, though, for those who are worried. Retrieving the golden scales is what? I hear you definitely there. the hardest thing that I have to do in this mission. I had more trouble with the golden scales than I did doing anything else. Although, now that I think about it... With him facing diagonal, there is no sound oh that I can perceive. That was a stupid thing not to think of. Well, the scales are going to be easy, but I just realized that with him tilted that way, getting into the lower library is going to be extremely difficult. <laughs> oh, Garrett! Who dares interrupt my studies? Come on. That was a problem I didn't have in the practice run. I don't know how I'm going to get into the lower libraries. I may have to put out some lights. We'll see. Anyway, there we go. The golden scales are worth a whopping 450 and bring my total to 15%. Balance and health to you, Keeper. Okay, well, we're gonna need to descend behind him that much as... Well, I can probably climb down this wall and get through the door just fine. So... Let's get down. Who I need to manage that silently, of but course. The other thing to note about the golden scales, if it wasn't obvious, they are the first piece of special loot. Even though the main storyline is moving along now. Balance and health to you, keeper. We still cannot forget the importance of making good money. There we go. Now, I'd like to just drop to the carpet. Hmm? We can't jump there is no any farther that I can perceive. because of that flag. It is inappropriate to put himself above us, so Let me try one more time just to see if I can manage that without a green alert. I feel like I ought to be able to.
if I just use a slightly Greetings. different May you strategy. Well tonight. Let's move into this alcove and mantle on top of this statue. <laughs> and then from here, I should be able to jump on top of that flag. Whatever else they may be. Ah! If I manage to stick the landing, I should be able to jump farther out onto the carpet. Number one, without taking any damage, and number two, without being close enough to the guy to alert him. Oh, Garrett's flying. Now he's not. First keeper or <laughs> this. First keeper or land that. As if we should forget. A sound. hero. Hmm. Well, even that made a sound. Just a random noise. Hmm. I don't want that. I was very happy to stick the landing, but I wanted Garrett to attach to the wall, not drop straight down. Let's do a real save here before anything becomes irreversible. Or at least before I commit to the flag jump. That way the event that I do ever stick the landing. You heard something, but what? In the event that I do stick the landing, I'll be able to quick save and then work from the top of the flag. Try again. Nope. Hey, does someone approach? But that gave me some clarity anyway. I can't attach to that wall. So the only way the flag helps me is getting further out onto the carpet. Potentially. There we go. Let's quick save. Ah! Once I'm on there, Garrett doesn't really have room to jump. So I think I may... I had to put out a light and take a green alert when he was facing straight out. Ah. Well, that time I avoided I green alert, well. but I took a point of damage. What if I move down the flag so my jumping off point is just that much lower? Uh-oh. Is... Strange noise. It appears there will be none of that. I'm feeling very patient today. Let me tell you why. Yesterday, for those of you who are into health and fitness, I've been doing P90X for quite a while now. But yesterday, I did the first workout in P90X 2 the bigger, badder, harder sequel, and I am so torn up that I can barely move. So today is a perfect day to play a little thief. Hey, strange noise. Of course, I do have another workout to do today. Thankfully, it's 
going to destroy my legs the way my whole upper body was annihilated yesterday, but I swear I feel like a puddle of jello. Alright, let's try jumping from here. Balance. Did I hear it? The patroller was the only one who heard me. No. It's a process, people. It's a process. Now I can avoid a green alert from the stationary guy. I can do it without taking damage. So all that's left is to let the patroller get far enough away so he doesn't green alert either. Greetings. Good evening. Perfect! Oh, I'm sorry. That was... that was exciting for me, that's all. So, since the book was moved, those golden scales are it for the Elder's Library, so... Let's get back to the east, so we can head up this stairway. We head up here. There, there's a lot to do, but good. There's the patroller. We can wait here in the staircase for him to head the other way, and we will move into. He just emerged from the scribe room, which is my next target. So we can move in behind him after he passes by. First. On the table to the left of the entrance, Glyph Warden Ruhan, have you heard of any further untoward behavior on the part of the glyphs in the Scribarium? Make, be sure to make note of exactly which scribes and which glyphs have proved difficult. Notify me immediately should any further changes occur. On this table, there is a golden coin, or er, silver, worth 50, brings my total to 16%. On the wall is another golden bell, worth 150. Brings my total to 19%. Now you see the two.